Hi everyone, this is Dave AC. Dot blit dot TV, and this is my the blog 118 for Friday the 22nd of October 2010 and I'm going to try and fit a 20 minute V blog into 15 minutes and still hopefully have time for my wine at the end. Well podcasting news to start off with well the uh, dot two pod shot has got episode 225 up on the feeds and that includes a really great interview uh, with Mr Tony Lee that I think most of the Dot Who uh, fans will have heard of and that's done from the New York Comic Con. Uh, in fact I should have worn my waistcoat I think today in his honour so do give that a listen. At the Colton Collective we've been uh, very busy as well. Last Sunday we did um, part six of the FSX uh, 200 poll and this was the part that dealt with favourite sages, mentors and boffins and I hope you'll give that a listen either from the Torchview page itself 54821 or from our fan page that's uh, the Cult and Collective uh, Facebook fan page or indeed uh, go to uh, cultdom.com where our chronicles are. Also, Ian got up the great interview that he did with his old friend from New Zealand, Mr. Paul Schoons. Now, uh, Paul uh, has been a long, long time uh, Doctor Who fan, and uh, I'm going to mention something uh, of one of the magazines he used to edit a while ago. But uh, this uh, interview is mainly talking about his work on Doctor Who DVDs doing the infotext. And the two that he's just worked on are The Planet of Fire and uh, Caves of Androzani. So um, please do give that special uh, Cult and Collective interview podcast a listen. Really uh, very, well, enjoyable, but lots of information uh, about towards how these DVDs uh, get produced. Okay, uh, this coming Sunday, we're going to go and talk about From the Mind of Terry Gilliam. So we're doing everything from his days at Monty Python, uh, through from Time Bandits, uh, The Fisher King, Brazil, uh, uh, and The Imaginarium of Dr. Panassas. So please try and join us uh, on Torture. That's 54821, and the programme starts at 2pm Eastern Daylight Time. OK, um, other bits of uh, news. Well, some sad news. Graham Crowden, let me make sure I pronounced his name correctly. Yeah, Graham uh, Crowden has died, sadly, at age 87. Now, uh, I only read about this today on the BBC News site. I hadn't been aware, in fact, that he'd been offered the part of Doctor Who when they were looking for the fourth Doctor, and um, he he turned it down. But he did eventually appear in Doctor Who. He appeared with uh, Tom Baker in The Horns of Nyman, a four-part story. So um, he is one of another uh, sad loss to the Doctor Who uh, universe. So uh, uh, commiserations, of course, to his family as well. Okay, other science fiction and spin-off news. Well, the Sarah Jane Adventures Series 4 is going along quite nicely. The second story just aired this week. Uh, This was the uh, two-parter, The Vault of Secrets. And actually, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a stronger story than the the first one, the Nightmare Man story that had started the season off. And um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, So looking forward to the rest of the season of Sarah Jane Adventures. Now, not Doctor Who, but a friend of Doctor Who, uh, Mark Gatiss, uh, who, of course, has written for Doctor Who uh, and starred in Doctor Who, uh, had a one-off play. uh, I'll just show you the picture from my magazine. And it was uh, the first Men in the Moon. And it's Mark Gatiss. And uh, Rory Kinnear there, who star in this uh, play. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, a very, uh, very good little story. And it captured the the feel of um, the H.G. Wells story uh, pretty well, I thought. So try and check that out if there's some way you can do so. OK, I'm going to go through a, a list of tech items before I start moving the camera around to do other things. Um, right, um, P- PlayStation 3 news, certainly in the States, uh, Netflix 
is now uh, about to be, well, on the 18th of October, Netflix became available on the PlayStation 3. I don't think that applies to here in the UK. Apple had their big event back to the Mac. And um, as well as a number of other announcements, the operating system has been upgraded now. It's up to 10.7, and that has been called Lion. We've gone from Snow Leopard, Snow Leopard, and this is Lion. So um, uh, that's an update for the Mac fans. Uh, Firefox, if you use that as your browser, the latest update on that is 3.6.11. Uh, unless you're using uh, the beta version for that, is of course. Um, if you use uh, Thunderbird as your mail client, that's also had an update to 3.1.5. And um, in broadcasting news, uh, there's been a confirmation that uh, the BBC One HD channel will start here in the UK on the 3rd of November um, as a full HD channel for BBC One. The current BBC HD channel will continue and hopefully have its hours extended. Uh, so that is good news for us in the UK. If you have Sky in the UK, there's also uh, ITV2 has now started ITV2 HD channel. So lots of little bits and pieces. Now one more piece of uh, tech news and that affects this vlog. Uh, Blip.tv, and again I'll show a little bit more of this when I move the camera, is changing, moving away from Flash to HTML5 and it's going to use uh, for the encoding the H.264 codec for QuickTime, which means I usually do that codec myself here uh, when I've recorded this, so I might try and upcode this native uh, Windows Media video, which is at even higher quality, and see how that goes. So, Tim, we may have some wobbles on the video this week, but I will still put up the MPEG-4, the suitable for the iPod uh, version uh, at the lower uh, standard resolution. Okay, uh, oh, one bit of sporting news before I go to my bits and pieces around. Uh, well done to Andy Murray, who... Uh, won the Shanghai Open, beating Roger Federer. I don't think that's spoiler now, because it was last week, so well done Andy Murray. That really places him well for the start of the next se season, uh, which of course will open with the Australian Open uh, early next year. OK, I think that's all my little bits and pieces. Uh, what I'm going to do is, um, I haven't got a book, but I have got some classical music, so we'll go to that next. And this is Bach, Violin Concertos, uh, Perlman and Zuckerman. I'm not going to try and pronounce their first names, uh, with Daniel Barenboim conducting the English Chamber Orchestra. And the one I'm going to play is track 10. That will focus kindly for us. And that is Concerto in D minor for two violins. So let's just hear a very brief bit of that. Lovely music. I'm going to stop it now. Beautiful, beautiful. Mid-price EMI CD. Quite an old one in my collection, but a goodie. OK, um, um, <laughs> I'm going to go to my DVD now. Now, uh, the last three weeks I've been doing about Doctor Who, A Trial of Time Lord. Now, I've got one more disc for that, but I'm not going to do it this week because I haven't actually gone all the way through to the fourth disc yet. So I want to actually get on to that before I do it. So I will continue that either next week, or it could even be the week after. But one DVD that I've just been enjoying, and I think actually I'm going to have to recommend to Ian Six Doctor that the Cultum does something about this particular director, um, Hitchcock, because uh, uh, I was looking through my DVDs for something to watch, and I came across Vertigo, and it really is a, 
great, great story. So I decided that um, one day I'd, I'd have a little look through it. And I really, really enjoyed it. So what I've got set up is uh, James Stewart and Kim Novak in Alfred Hitchcock's masterpiece Vertigo, which apparently wasn't that well received when it first aired. And I put this to one of the extras on the DVD. I'm going to have a little bit of that now. now so let me just get the camera as steady as I can. And let's see a little bit of this. Production. This is hallowed ground to movie buffs. In 1957, Alfred Hitchcock came to the Golden Gate Bridge to create one of the most extraordinary and memorable images in motion picture history. This is the place where Jimmy Stewart jumped into San Francisco Bay to save Kim Novak in Vertigo. When Vertigo was first released, it wasn't one of Hitchcock's greatest hits, but time does things to movies in the way we see them. Today, Many people regard Vertigo as Hitchcock's masterpiece. And I'm going to stop it there. Uh, absolutely uh, brilliant stuff on that uh, DVD. So let me go over here while I've got the camera. Try not to shout. There's the item about the uh, Graham Crowden that died aged 87 just recently. So I'm going to just click on the various things that I've got open here. Um, First of all is the confirmation from Daniel Na Na Nadjil Nadler, never get her name right, that the BBC One HD channel is ready for launch and will launch on November the 3rd. Uh, well, <laughs> we've got this open. Series 4, Sarah Jane Adventures. I don't think this is spoilers now, but just to tell you that the next double story is Death of the Doctor. And three more titles. The Empty Planet. Lost in Time. Goodbye, Sarah Jane Smith. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more piece of information there. That's the Cultum episode that Ian did with uh, Mr. Paul Schoons. Writer, classic series, a DVD and infotext, Planet of Fire and Cave of Androzani, and much, much more. And one of those much, much more is that he was the editor of the Time and Space Visualizer in New Zealand. And if you go to this page, some of the older ones are online and you can read them online. So I'm just going to go over to the URL. And you can read some of the original ones there. Uh, so um, Paul is pretty, pretty knowledgeable in all things Doctor Who. One last thing before we go to the wine, and that is to just say that um, this is just to say that there is changes to what's happening to uh, the um, way that Blit TV is doing the files. Now, I realise I've rushed those little things a little bit, but I want to get on part to my wine, because it's an unusual one for me. It's the Pinot Noir, which I very rarely drink. And another name I can now say, Colchagua Valley from Chile, 2009, and it's 14%. Please focus, we haven't got time. And I'm going to have to sip it very, very quickly, aren't I? Here we go. Beautiful colour and lots of musty, to tobacco y smells coming off it. Mm. It's lovely. Bear it black, strawberry. Red cherry. It is lovely. And I'm going to run out of time. Oh, dear me. Bye, all. Catch you next week.